Hello friends, if you're new, welcome. Why don't you go down, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any episodes. For my fans and subscribers, welcome back. Thank you for the patronage. Today's topic, Jim Jones looking for another home. Don't forget I now have a merch store. Link is in the description. Not much else I need to say. Let's get on with the video. With Jones insisting that nuclear annihilation was near, he started looking for other places to take his congregation. Most likely, he was just looking for a way to maximize control. However, due to the drugs, he probably was paranoid of a nuclear holocaust. He started looking into safer places. One of these safer places enunciated by Esquire magazine was Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Before going to Belo Horizonte, however, he and his family stopped in Mexico. Archie I. James met him there and reported that Winberg was changing the nature of the sermons. While Jones focused on social issues, Winberg emphasized Bible-based preaching. Jones had always wanted to limit outside influence, but he was in a quandary. I. James reported that Winberg was plotting to take over leadership and Jones should come home immediately. However, Jones needed his people to think that he had their best interests at heart. So instead of returning, he asked I. James to monitor the situation and keep him updated. When they arrived, Marcelin was shocked at the non-modern way of life, as well as the poverty. Using the money they had brought from the U.S., they rented a three-bedroom house in Belo Horizonte, and everyone spoke Portuguese, which complicated things since the Joneses only spoke English. Jones soon met a bilingual man in a post office. This translator, Ed Mullman, told Jones that he had been in Brazil for three years as an evangelist and invited the family for a meal. Jones explained his vision to Mullman and how he wanted to investigate Belo Horizonte as a possible relocation for People's Temple to survive a nuclear disaster. Mallman was sympathetic and offered to introduce Jones to local officials. By the time they left, 16-year-old Bonnie Mallman was a friend. Bonnie had fought with her parents over her Brazilian boyfriend because her parents disapproved of interracial dating. However, the Joneses, with their rainbow family, the only problem with it. Bonnie soon started to help Marceline with tours and served as a translator. With her parents' permission, Bonnie moved in with the Joneses, copied Marceline's look, and adored the children. Like with other children, Jones gave Bonnie sex advice, but she wasn't uncomfortable with this sex talk. However, other things did bother her. For instance, she noticed that even though Jim claimed to be a missionary, he had no Bibles in the house. Additionally, the family did not pray before meals, but when Bonnie offered to pray, they did not object. So apparently, they didn't have anything against prayer. They just didn't pray. Jones became frustrated. Establishing free food and clothing programs 
was out of the question because he did not have the money. He had planned on receiving stipends from the church, but none of them came. The temple was in trouble. People joined and stayed in the temple for one of two reasons. They either liked the socialist principles it espoused, or they believed in Jim and wanted to be part of a church that he led. With Jones in Brazil and Winberg reverting to the Bible, neither reason was valid anymore. Because of this, people were leaving in greater numbers which meant that Sunday offerings were reduced at the same time that there was no income from Jones's circuit work, and profits from the nursing homes weren't enough because people paid only what they could afford. Jones and his family had to live on what he earned at part-time jobs and occasional donations. Jones spent much of his free time trying to hold the temple together from Brazil, raining letters of encouragement onto his associate pastors, Winberg and I. James. He did have to be careful with Winberg, though, so Winberg would not rebel and take the rest of the congregation with him. To this end, Jones simply encouraged the associate pastors to follow his example, and of course, send money, because at this point, the Joneses were really hurting. In order to establish a new home for People's Temple and Belo Horizonte, Jones had to build the same progressive reputation there as he had in Indianapolis. That way, when Temple members arrived, they would become a part of an already established prominent church. Jones also stayed in contact with members, encouraging them to write their true pastor and ask him anything they wanted. They asked him what they should do in Indianapolis, to which he replied that they should continue to support the program's he had established. Also at this time, he instituted a spy system. At this time, world events gave Jones an advantage. While freedom marches in America erupted in violence, spy planes indicated that the Soviets were building a missile site in Cuba. For 13 days, the world was on the brink of disaster. Then the Soviets agreed to abandon the site if America removed its missiles from Turkey. This only served to make Jones's prophecy seem more valid to Temple members, and they wondered when he would send for them. However, Jones and his family were preparing to leave Belo Horizonte. Without money, they could not set up social programs in this area that they had set up in Indianapolis. Jones didn't give up on Brazil, though. He and his family moved to Rio de Janeiro, where Jim got a job teaching English at an American school. There, he and Marceline cared for the poor, particularly volunteering in orphanages, as in Belo Horizonte, he was only one of many Christian missionaries. Some of these Christian missionaries represented well-financed organizations. After two years in Brazil, Jim realized that relocating there wasn't going to happen. Besides, the news from Indianapolis was pretty bad. Winberg was solidifying his control over People's Temple and created a rift between his supporters and Jones fans. Jones needed to act, but did not trust K 
case or I James enough to dismiss Winberg, Winberg and elevate one of them to acting pastor. At this time, Ed Molman decided to take a break and vacation stateside. Jones then asked Molman to be acting pastor of People's Temple, and he agreed. However, Molman was also a traditionalist. When word got back to Jones in Brazil, he decided that he could only trust himself to lead People's Temple and decided to head home. Well, friends, that's it for today. I hope you found it informing and interesting. If you did, hit that like button, press the subscribe button, and if you want to know when I come out with new content, ring the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, Discord, email, PayPal, and website links are in the description, along with the source I used for this video. I have a new merch store, so check that out. It's on my website if you want to. Also, please leave comments in the comment section. Not only do I love hearing from you, but it also triggers YouTube algorithm. And don't forget, I will be implementing a comment of the week on my live streams. So if you want to get picked, comment. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends, stay safe and goodbye.